board. Well, brothers and sisters, I am really excited for today for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, I, I want to introduce you to uh, Sister Thomas. Uh, Mandy, are you online okay? I'm good. Good. Excellent. Uh, Mandy Thomas is the manager of the LMS um, administration. She basic, she's basically the queen when it comes to <laughs> the, the learning management system of Canvas. Um, there's a lot I could say about that job title and responsibilities, but I want to talk more about Mandy. Sister Thomas, uh, I, I had the opportunity to work closely with her for the last few months at church headquarters, and I can tell you this about about Sister Thomas. One, number one is that she has a testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, she is not just being um, a part of the gospel. She is, um, in terms of just her work, you can tell it because she lives it. And she's just a fantastic disciple of Christ. Second thing I love about Sister Thomas is she is, um, she really wants to serve you. And so as you have problems and concerns, she, I, I can guarantee that if she had the ability, she would, she would visit every single class in, on the, the planet to be able to help you to succeed. Now, obviously that's not possible, but that's the kind of heart of a rescuer that, that she has. And lastly, she is brilliant. She has a knowledge of Canvas that um, has been in the secondary or in, in higher education world. She uh, has a, an extensive background in Canvas and the use of Canvas. And so she brings to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints not only a wealth of knowledge, but the ability to help us to become better. So I've asked her to, 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 to be our presenter today and, and to kind of give you some um, tips and tricks and some things to know about as, as it comes to some great things. So Sister Thomas, I'm going to have you go ahead and take over. Thank you. Wow. Um, I'll Venmo you the $20 for that introduction. <laughs> I didn't know that about myself. So that's great. Thank you. And actually, we've worked together for over a year, Mike, just to, just so you know. So it's, it's been a it's been a great year and we miss you. <laughs> so you guys are so lucky to have Mike. I can't even tell you. It was, it was a huge chop of my arm when he left. So um, I'm so glad to be here and that Mike invited me. I love doing these types of presentations because I feel like the reach is just so much more and you can hear straight from the horse's mouth what is available to you for Canvas. And so I'm just going to take only a few minutes to show you uh, some of the resources that I think will help you with preparing for your semester. Um, and so I don't want to bog you down with too much information just because it's a lot and you, uh, your mind is in the classroom probably already and I also teach so I completely understand. Um, so the first thing I want to show you um, is actually Canvas. So we're going to go there. And I want to point your attention here to this little help button on your global navigation bar. And this should be now your best friend. So anytime you log in, you're going to look at that button and you're going to say what kind of cool resources are there. And I'm going to highlight a few for you, some for you specifically as teachers, and then some for your students as well, and to point them and lead them in that direction. These resources are only about a month to two months old now, and so you may not have even noticed that they were there. So the first thing up here is we really try to hit the students first. So the featured highlight is actually for the students. And I'll open that so you can take a look and see what it is, but I highly recommend every single one of you read this. And this is a frequently asked questions page of the most frequently asked questions I actually get from your students. And so you may not have realized that there's a simple answer to some of them and they are probably asking you the same things. So take some time when you get a chance to read through this. Um, and so it's bolded as to the issue and then below it is kind of how to get that help that you need. And there's about 10 in here. You can see through BYU pathway questions about the Canvas mobile app. What happens when they're having trouble, you know, recording their readings in my seminary, my institute, all of that good stuff. A lot of it may answer your personal questions as well as who do you contact when you have trouble with some of those resources. This is a completely open and public URL. So if you grab it and you share it with your, your, with your students or anybody else, anybody in the world can actually get access to this. So there are no firewalls or limitations with this particular resource. So again, that's in the help button and it's the first link there. Um, and if you ever have some really good uh, questions that you wanna submit to us, um, please do so. And I'll show you uh, where you can kind of get help from us as well in just a second. The next thing I wanna demonstrate though is where you can get help for yourself. So I'm going to preview a brand new SharePoint that should be open to all 
uh, church employees and called teachers. Okay. So the first thing you're going to notice here is there's a bunch of words, and this is going to be where I personally highlight any new content releases that are going into Canvas, especially in languages. It's very common that, unfortunately, our language um, goes out in pieces. Uh, not my fault, I promise, but, but if you want to know what's out and what's available, it's there. If there's outages and if there's updates to the system, they're all located here on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side are the resources I want to point your attention to. You have online teachers, and then there's also support administration, which includes online directors and administrative assistants. So let's go to the teacher one. And it's an accordion style, so you're going to find your questions here and then the answer to them below. And there's only a few here, um, and we're still working on more. But hopefully this will get you guys started and orient you to maybe some commonly asked questions that you may have or somebody uh, may have as well. And it tells you where to go, um, gives you links to some community guides as well. So this is for you um, or anybody that's teaching or facilitating any online class. All right now, sometimes you just have a simple question that you need to find out um, about the use of Canvas. All the master guides are all here and search the Canvas guides, but I can tell you a much easier way to search. When you go into Google, just type the word Canvas and whatever question you have. And it will actually be a better way to get to it. So if you go into this, it it's, has all of the guides. You pick kind of who you are here. Um, and then you can, so if I pick instructor, if you're an instructor, um, it has a ton of resources. It even has it in languages as well. But honestly, if you don't know what you're looking for, it's kind of tough. So I highly recommend just going to whatever search browser you have, type the word Canvas, and then the question. So you could do something like Canvas, due date, uh, changing due dates in assignments, or Canvas, changing due dates in discussions. Canvas, um, how to update my profile. Canvas, how to grade a student's assignment. So things like that. So it's really simple and easy, and that's actually how I learned how to use Canvas. I'm completely self-taught, and I learned it by Googling and actually teaching in Canvas for quite some time. Mandy, this is, yeah. uh, this is a really, really important tip that you just shared. Ironically, a lot of times when, when teachers will ask me questions, that's all I do is if I don't know the answer because of experience, I'm just going to go to Google and put Canvas and I'm going to copy and paste their question in there. And it's going to give me YouTube videos. It's going to give me all kinds of really good stuff. So you just shared probably one of the best um, gems that are out there to be able to help you as a teacher. Yep. So let's do Canvas um, student view. That's a really good one. How do I view a course as a test student using Canvas view? Hopefully you guys are all using this feature. It's a really great one. And then it just goes to the guide. It also has related guides on the right. It has screenshots. Most of the problems come with not knowing what word to choose that's Canvas specific. But I promise if you kind of just try some variations of your question, you'll get there and you'll find what you need and you'll start learning the Canvas lingo. If you ever need help, um, Mike's good at that. You are welcome to email us to kind of help find a guide. You're like, hey, I'm trying to search for this thing and I don't have the word that describes it because Canvas uses things uh, differently. And if you've ever used a different learning management system, something like Blackboard or Moodle, those terms might be slightly different in those um, systems that you've used with other um, places you've taught at. So if you just need help kind of finding and navigating that, let us know. But I'm gonna tell you the best way to do it is to struggle through it. And that's literally how I learned how to do this. Okay, and then um, the most important one, I guess, or the one that you can get a hold of me is right here in report a problem. So this is our ticketing system that we like to use. You put the subject line, something like maybe um, help with modules. I don't know, I'm just making it up. Um, the description, please make it as detailed as possible. Uh, I know again, words are hard. Describe it as much as possible. Don't just say this broke or this, what broke? What's the page? How, like, how do you know? What did you do? What did you troubleshoot? Because we don't have any additional information given to us besides what you tell us. It actually will send us and will send you an email confirming that you've submitted this ticket. And then if you have any screenshots or screencasts that you want to show to show the error, um, then please include those by just simply replying to that email. And it just works just like a basic email. So you just reply to it like you're going to talk to your friend. Um, and then upload those attachments and it will come right to us along with all of those um, different sources, which I think are, which I think is very helpful, so. Okay, yeah, and Julie, oh, Julie's my intern. Julie, wave, can you see her? 
So she's here tonight kind of helping. Yes, she's um, she's kind of who answers most of those tickets. And if you can give us a full URL, that's also very helpful. And by simply just going to the top here and grabbing whatever page you're on where you're seeing that error really helps facilitate this a little quicker, along with any student names you're having problems with. So if you're seeing a particular student that's not being able to see things, if you tell us who that is, we can try to replicate the error. I can be anybody in Canvas. I can be you. So the more information you tell us of who's happening and a screenshot of what they're seeing, the quicker um, we can get back to you. And then it kind of stops like the back and forth five times asking those individual questions. All right, those are the only things I wanted to highlight. You're welcome to go through the rest of it down here if you want to. It's not, um, those are the things that I think will help you best with this semester starting. And I also wanted to leave some time for questions. Did you guys have any questions? Not yet, you're a week early for uh... Institute. For all the problems? Yeah. Yeah, I just please remember question. to publish your class on time. That's all I ask <laughs> every semester. That's the bulk of my questions from the students. It's like, where's my class? You know why Pathway ruins it for everybody? Like, because they publish theirs on a certain date, they have an expectation. It's so funny. So, yeah, somebody had a question? I do. Um, today, I tried to make an announcement about the Arizona students, and I noticed there it was wrong. So I tried to edit it, and I... I couldn't. I couldn't find a way to edit it. So I just deleted the announcement and made it again. And I did that three times. Is there any way to edit announcements once you've made them? Uh, you can. Um, the only thing is once it's sent out, it emails it to the student and that's it. So your best bet is to just re-email a duplicate copy or they think it they don't understand. You should put something like at the top of it, an amendment from the last one. But yeah, once you oh. send it out into the universe, it is there. They got three then, didn't they? Yeah, they did. They sure did, but they now know. They know. Yeah. I uh, know student to do cannot be turned off. Not that not as far as I know. I've never tried to do that, but there's no button on the student side to be able to because it's based on the due dates. So if you have due dates set, they'll have a to-do list. Yeah. Yeah. Really so the so what I'm thinking is. Sometimes students go straight to the to do and then they end up not doing the devotional and so I'm going in and turning on the devotional to be in the to do and it's just kind of a hassle I would rather train them to go to the modules that's why I asked. So a good way to do that is is just to talk to them about it, ask them to do it in a certain order and letting them know that not everything that's due is actually in there. So it's very misleading for them to like if they go there they they lose a lot of things that are just don't have due dates on it. Mandy, but, would it would it help? But the, other, but the other thing is that they're they're actually set up. If they don't do all the pages in order, they can't get to the the. the it, it's not open. What's can fix that. on the due date's not open, and the calendar's not open. Yep. So you're well, you're welcome to change that. So if you go into the requirements. But, no, no, no. What I'm saying is that's a good thing. Oh. Because that means they have to go page by page by page. They can't just jump over to the due date, to what's in the calendar as a due date. They have to read, or at least they have to open up each page. Sister Dean, are you saying that to change the the requirements is what you're telling us? So the, the requirements in the modules, it has to be looked at before they go on to the next one, correct? That's that's the way the mod modules are set up by default. Mm -hmm. In in some courses, yeah, it's a great idea seminary. to add to my course. Thank you because I've had to undo some of that. Um, somebody asked in the chat, when you post an announcement in Canvas, are the students notified that it's there if they have set up their notifications? Yes. If they have not set up their notifications to be notified externally, then it will just show up as an icon on their dashboard that there's something there with that announcement sign. So what you see in your dashboard is what they see. So there's usually like a little red dot. But you should remind them at the beginning of the semester to go into their notifications and have it emailed to them so that it does email to them directly. It just depends on how they have it set up and they have to be the ones to adjust that. So Mandy, for your issue, um, email us so we can look at your actual profile. Since yours is a specific case, I'd have to see what it looks like. So go ahead and use that help button. You can send us an email and we'll look at it. 
Mandy, I, I, a question that I've received a couple times lately have, has had to do with online seminary students not receiving notifications. Uh, what would you recommend for the for probably both online seminary and online institute to make sure that the students are getting the notifications that uh, something is due or that you've sent out an announcement? What would be the, the best advice you have on that one? Yeah, that's, it depends on what the issue is for the student. Number one, just make sure that the students have the correct email address. Sometimes they have an older one or a family one. So make sure whatever email address they have listed in their profile is the one that they are going to check. That's the first thing I would check because um, Canvases tends to be outdated. And even if they update their email address on their church account, it does not update in Canvas. They have to do that separately and manually. And then the next thing is to go into notifications in Canvas and actually have them check to see what their notifications are. And so hopefully you guys all know where your notifications are. If you go into your account in notifications, you want to make sure that all of the green, the, the green things are on depending on what they want to see and not see. Um, and it also, just so you, you guys know, if you're teaching multiple classes, you can do it at a per class basis as well, depending on the class you teach. I mean, the students should only be in one, so it will default, but they need to make sure that their information is correct. So I have a similar question. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to set up the notification for the student to set up the notification to be delivered via text message? So the text, the SMS text messaging system doesn't work in Canvas. They could do it via the app. So if they've downloaded the student Canvas app and they have push notifications turned on, it will notify them through the phone through the app itself, similar to a text message. Okay. Mandy, this mm -hmm. is Sister Peterson. As I have gone through my roster of students, I see that many of them uh, have no under do not contact. I don't know what that means. If that means no, don't contact me, or no, it's okay to contact me, or if it's if it means they just haven't put anything into it. Is does this affect campus and how they receive? No, none. If they don't. So Wise is com Wise pushes information into Canvas, but once Canvas has the information, it's just that moment in time. So whatever is there is the contact information you have for the student, and it doesn't have any like security settings or anything like that. Sister Peterson, when, when, a, when a family chooses to be a do not contact family with the church, it'll say yes on that. And so basically what that means is if the student's not showing up to your class and it says yes, you can't contact that family to try to get them to come to seminary. But if they do come to seminary and they're in online institute or online seminary, you can contact them through the, the classroom no problem. It's really when they stop coming, they've chosen not to be reached out after for the second contact. That's what that means. Okay, Brother Goldhart, are you referring to WISE or to Canvas or both? Both. It's the same thing that's coming in. Am I correct in, in saying that we cannot contact them through WISE, that we don't have that ability to message students in WISE at this time? You can, however... The wise emails right now, unless Mandy, if you know if it's been fixed, but a lot of the wise emails are going into the spam um, emails. And so you could still use the text message um, function in, in wise, but our wise email system aren't getting received by students. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I don't think it's fixed yet. I'm looking right now, actually. Um, no, and the Yahoo accounts are still having a problem as well. So if any, if you're sending messages to people with an at Yahoo, um, the WISE team is trying to figure out a workaround, but I don't think they've come up with a, an acceptable one yet. So, Sister Crouch, you had a question? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this kind of goes back to somebody who was talking about, you know, the announcements going out. So if you set your announcement, though, not to, to go off until a certain date in the future, you can edit it, right? As, as many, many times, times as you want. want. Mm -hmm. Just as long, that one that's going to go out is when that date comes up. So if, totally. you're, if you're not sure if you want to change something, just set it to some date until you have it, what you want it to be. Then you can edit it as many times as you want and then either take the date out or put the date right then in and then it'll go finished. Yep, that's perfect.
Um, just one more thing while, while we have uh, some time. So I just want to help with, so huh, how do I say this? Your local leaders are the number one support. So using Mike, using his team, using people that he assigns to help you guys with online should take priority over contacting me. And the reason is sometimes um, there is a choice for the lo local adaptation of material. And sometimes the adaptation is quite different from the content that I've put out into the world for you guys, where we can't help any longer. So just to be clear, if there's adaptations or things or questions about content that we actually didn't release or that Mike adapted to fit your needs the best, which is great that he did, you need to seek Mike and his team for help before contacting us only because we don't know how to help you. Like I can tell you how to fix something and I can train you on it, but we don't like to make changes to other people's content because it might have been set up a certain way for a certain reason, um, like due dates or the calendar or something like that. So just always make sure that you reach out to Mike first to see if it's something, I mean, we'll try to help the best we can. We're just quite limited when it's something that deviates greatly from church content. I hope that makes sense. Anything else? Mandy, would you mind taking just a minute to share the process of how how have we got the content into Canvas? And, and because you play such a, an integral part of getting it from WISE and from a curriculum team, can you just share so that they're aware of, of all the, the different things? You, you mentioned just briefly that you're getting it in languages. And, and I think sometimes it's good for us to see the grand scale of how vast the universe of the church it, online programs are, if that makes sense. Yeah, so you kind of want me to go like just big scale from like publishing services and like kind of how it comes to my hand. Okay, so I'm the last leg of, of the content that you receive that's church content, okay? So I'm the last resort. I did not make the content. So if you don't like it, it wasn't me. <laughs> okay, so it starts as inception years in advance, and I mean this sincerely, so it takes a few years to design the curriculum. So what you saw this year was from two years, inception or thought was from two years ago. Um, it goes and is created from a combination of the publishing services department who makes your manuals in collaboration now with our division. And our division's collaboration has only been um, here for like the last um, almost two years now. And so they work together to make sure that the book aligns as best we can with the online content. And then from that, once the English version is completed, it is translated in usually about nine languages or so, depending on the particular product or type. Once it gets translated, which takes a full year for translation, it then comes to me to be released to the public after it goes through some quality checks. Um, and I simply just set the settings up select the term dates, and then roll it out to you guys. And that's done in the form of what's called a blueprint course. And some of you may be familiar with this if you guys teach at BYU and some other places what a blueprint is, but it's basically the master course. So what you do is when you go into WISE and create the course, you pick the language you want, if it's available, and the course type. And it sends a message to Canvas that says, I need this course in this area for this teacher. It populates an empty Canvas course. And then the content gets dumped into it from that blueprint. And then you see that it usually just takes a few minutes from the initiation point. Um, and then after that, you can decide to keep the content as is, manipulate the content as you see fit, changing due dates and settings. Or Mike G may even go a step further if he has curated content specific for your area to meet your needs, will delete that content and load in content that he feels is more applicable to your situation. Uh, Chris. Uh, yeah, this may be uh, sort of down the line for uh, at the end of a course, but um, I downloaded last year's uh, content. I exported it, and the the file I've never done that before. The file is an IMSCC file. Mm -hmm. How is that data then accessed outside of Canvas? It's not. It has to go back into Canvas. So you would have to upload it into Canvas again to review it. Mm -hmm, correct. And all you would need to do is have an empty shell of a course to be able to do that. So if you need a sandbox for that or a development shell to hold it, just send us an email. We'll be happy to get that for you. Great. Thank you. It's always great to go back and refer to some things that had, had occurred. Right, or save past. your hard work, right? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Uh, Sister Crouch. 
So um, several people I'm sure have like really large classes like I do, like I have 40 people in my class. And earlier, Brother Hayes showed me this cool thing that I'd forgotten about since I was since when I had been a student, which is that you can put people in groups. And I thought maybe you or he can tell people about how you do that so that um, like when you have your discussion boards, you don't have to have 40 people all on the same discussion board. You can put people in your class in groups so that maybe they're in groups of 10 or I mean 10 people and it makes them makes it a lot easier for people to um, you know, start a relationship with people in their classes. Yeah, that's a really great recommendation. I didn't realize your guys' classes got so big. So let me show everybody where that button is if you are interested. Group management takes a little bit of a learning curve. So just be aware, forgive yourself for not understanding it at first. You're gonna go into your people tab and it is right here. Plus group. And then you're gonna go ahead and name your group set up the settings. So the best way to learn how to do this, I don't have time to show it to you in detail, is guess what? Google Canvas set up groups. And you'll be able to do that. But it's just in the people tab here. You can self, you can assign students. You can have them assign themselves and pick their own group, or you can randomly assign them to groups. It actually, what it does is it populates a new button for them here on this bar, on the global navigation bar. Um, and it allows them to manage all of the items that come to them in that group, which is kind of cool. So you, you do have to level set your students just a little bit, let them know that, oh, a new magic button popped up. It's not there otherwise. You, they would not see it unless they're assigned to a particular group, but it's great to facilitate really good, unique, small conversations. And then you can rotate the students too. Maybe one week you can do a discussion board with one group and then so they can get to know their other classmates and the next week, put them in a different group for a different activity. So then you can kind of get them connecting with each other in different and unique ways. So that was a great one. What else? Anything else? Sister Crouch, by the way, I will hire you. You have all the great ideas. Um, we are looking for an intern right now, just so you know. Well, you know, I am a Pathway BYUI graduate. And, so. There you go. So you know. So I had to learn all those canvas mm -hmm. things. So, yeah. And then nine years of seminary teaching. So there you go. That's great. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Sister Thomas. I appreciate your willingness to, to spend some time with us and, and share a couple tricks and tips. Um, I really, uh, I would recommend you go through the recording once we post it and re-watch where she went with the help and be able to see the different little places that she did uh, and then use that, bookmark that so that you, you know exactly where you need to go when students have questions. Um, I promise it will be a really huge help for you uh, for seminary or institute. Fantastic. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you. Um, I think it's important to recognize that we're, we're using a tool that sometimes gets in the way of the spirit. And so one of the hardest things that we need to recognize is that uh, the canvas can get frustrating. And whenever Canvas gets frustrating, frustration just kind of becomes a barrier to the Holy Ghost for a lot of people, including you and I. And <clears throat> I have learned by sad experience that when I spend three hours trying to make a, a, a discussion post look beautiful and super cute and ready to go, I, I forgot that... Uh, um, I spent all my time focusing on that, that canvas piece and I didn't spend my time focusing on my students. And so I just want to just um, end with this kind of a, a, a hope. Um, I think it's important when you recognize, let's go to the scriptures for just a quick second if you would please. Um, because we can't have a seminary meeting without spending some time with the Word of Word of God, in my opinion. And I want to actually go to the book of Isaiah. This was the uh, chapter that, that we my family covered last night. Let me just pull it up real quick. Um, it, it was the calling of, of Isaiah in chapter 6. And so you remember the imagery of Isaiah's 
the, the seraphim with the different uh, wings on and, and the calling of, of, of the prophet and the whole aspect of his, his imagery of him being called. But I love in verse 10, um, one of the goals of, um, well, if you go to verse 9, it says, And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. And in verse 10, Make the heart of, the, of this people fat. And make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and and convert, and be healed. I I kind of had an, a, a thought that one of our hope and goals is that we want to be able to help help our students to hear, and to understand, and to perceive the Spirit, to be able to hear Him. And to be able to see the Savior. And if we aren't careful, they won't hear and they won't see because they'll get frustrated with with the technology. Or you won't hear or you won't see because your grade book wasn't working the way you wanted it to. Or your announcement didn't go the way you wanted it to. Um, best advice I could give you is just take a moment, take a breath, say a prayer. And call me if you need to. But I promise it's going to be okay. Because I know that this church and your class is His. And the Savior is going to help your students have a good experience. Don't ever forget that. No matter, no matter what frustrations and, and questions and concerns and issues that take place, it's going to get frustrating at times, I promise. But I know he will help you make this work. And I know that you will see fantastic miracles because of the technology. Um, my full-time job is to help you succeed. And so you need to know that I've got your back 100%. And most of you, all of you that are online seminary, you also have a coordinator and administrative assistant as well that's, that's doing everything in their power to help you succeed. We want you to be able to have the best experience possible. Um, and so as you're doing this, I just bear testimony that you're not doing this alone. And that the Savior is very much involved in the details of your class. And, and I just testify that as you're going through, um, if you're an institute student or an institute teacher, uh, Brother Hayes and I are, we're going to um, kind of work together and divide and conquer in certain areas. We, we are here for you. So that you can succeed. Um, I promise that you will. I have loved watching the technology uh, evolve into a place where he allows the technology to reach the students that never would have been reached before. We truly are gathering Israel. And you are a part of that great work. And I am just so grateful for you. I am praying every day for you. Because we need you. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, 